This is your the fossilization of America leader fan fan radio network. Okay. And K F A N dot com. Two minutes four seconds past three central daylight time. We welcome you back. It is a Thursday production. Of the um, lightly acclaimed Bumper to Bumper program, also known as the Afternoon Aardvark, A-Hole in the Afternoon Show, and The Beast. We've tried many of them, but the original, of course, was Bumper to Bumper. My name is uh, Dan Barrero. I'm the former Ingstein Wretch newspaper of the Twin Cities. Boy, there's... (laughs) Speaking of the newspaper of the Twin Cities... There is a lot of stuff percolating behind the scenes, which uh, maybe we'll we'll start to reveal later in today's program. We've alluded to it before. I think John Athletic has as well, but uh, we'll save that. Guardsy grew up reading the newspaper, The Twin Cities. He is the uh, producer of the show, two-time state high school tennis champion. You still read it, right? Yeah, I do. You don't get it at home. Most people don't. I don't. I'm a subscriber, but only digitally. I have. I went digital. Finally, I want to say about six. Was it six months ago? Maybe even longer. Um, we talked about that on the air at the time because I am generally. I like to hold the newspaper. Me too. And I still do. I get the um, USA. No, I don't get the USA Today. That was the late great Denny Green. Yep. I get the Wall Street Journal at home, and I get the. Um, Sunday New York Times. It's a good combo at home as uh, as well. But there's a part of me that says, oh, maybe, do I really need to? I don't know. I always thought it was a rite of passage that you were actually like an adult or grown up person if you could actually fold the broadsheet newspaper. It's an art. It is right. It's an art. And when you're a kid, you're all over the place. I always felt like once you figured out how to turn it, yes. put it back, get it folded properly mm. to read it, then maybe flip it to read yep. the bottom. That's when you knew you, you had it together, when you could actually handle the broadsheet well, that part way. of my, and I, I still don't have it together, even though, uh, speaking of fossils, I've been on this earth almost 70 years because I'm too much in a hurry. You want to just get to the next like word? If I, well, no, it's like if I'm, let's say if I'm, you know, having my morning tea and crumpets while I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, go page by page, or I'm going from a story on the front page to the jump. And I'm eager. I'm in a hurry. I fold it too fast to get to that place. And then it's not properly folded on the fold. Got to take your time. Then you got problems. Yeah. Right? Yes. Did I ever tell you the um, the Steve Ashburner strategy on planes for people who reclined their seat in front of him too far? <laughs> you may have. I don't remember it. The Ashburner strategy, and it is, it is broadsheet newspaper related. I don't think you could do it with a tabloid. But broadsheet, what he would do, because he was also a very good meticulous folder, is as the seat's back almost in his lap. It's like all it's back as far as it can go. He would grab a newspaper that he was already reading. He would fold it. And it's the old bit of if you grab on a broadsheet too low on the page, the top part of the page is going to do what? It's going to droop. Yeah, it gets floppy. So he would droop the top of the page, basically onto the top of the head of the individual in front of him to attempt to get their attention. Um, I, I know he lives here. Is, he. is he Minnesotan? Is he one of us? Because that's very passive aggressive. It is passive aggressive. Yeah. I don't know if it ever led to a fight. I don't know if it ever got the, the message across, but I thought it was very, very clever at, uh, at the time. Um, what do we have broad? What do we have going for you today? We have uh, Dr. Dan's inbox. Guardsy's looking for help today. And um, you got plenty of extra time because we're moving the inbox. I know the 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 four thirty inbox purists continue to be sickened by the disrespect that the bit has shown is shown for that four thirty time. But because it doesn't involve a guest, it is movable. And because sometimes that's the best time a guest can join us, we move it. And so today the inbox is moved till five thirty. On the, on the other hand, the good news, as I said, is it gives you more time to contribute. So uh, email Garzy, JG, at KFAN.com. JG at KFAN.com. We moved the inbox because Brian McClung, who we were just talking about, I think, either yesterday or the day before, is going to uh, to join us as well to talk what might end up being an extremely... Well, there's a lot of good angles uh, right now. In, in vol- and some of them even have... 
local ramifications. The suggestion, and I don't know how, how accurate this is, or if this falls under the classification of the kind of story that we want to believe because we're so insecure and we want to be more than flyover country, the possibility that if Biden does step aside and if Harris ascends to be the Democratic presidential nominee, your guy, Wes Walls, well, not Wes Walls, <laughs> it's very different, uh, Tim Walls, yep. might be a vice presidential option a under sneaky consideration. One. A sneaky one. Not sure I'm buying it. One Minnesota. Who's to say? I'm sure McClung will... Um, being the astute political observer he is, we'll get into that. We've got the 5.30 press conference, right? President Biden conducting a presser at 5.30 that now is going to be probably the most watched daytime press conference in, well, history might be a little bit strong, but got to be top 10 because, well, for all the obvious reasons. Everybody wants to know if he can handle it. Everybody wants to know oh, is it, what it's going to be like, how uncomfortable it's going to be, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. We didn't even talk about this off air. Do we need to carry any of it live? Should we carry the first 15 minutes of it live, or is that silly because everybody else is going to be carrying it, and so we're better off just continuing to do a show I and mean, then respond to it? It is the president. Yeah. It's the president of the United States, and it seems fairly high stakes. I and, think. And what do we. That, that's the other thing. It. What's going to satisfy us, or what are we expecting? All what, of it. Can we? That, that's here's the concern I have: is that we're in that mode of what kind of curve are we grading on at this point? And even let's say he does reasonably well, what does that change? To me, the only thing that makes this potentially huge is if it's a disaster. Literally, like worse than the debate. And that might well be the step that nudges even those who publicly have tried to stand tall with the president to say, you got to step aside. I, I don't know. Um, because it, they can't give him a pill. I know there's a bunch of Republicans who think they, they do. But they, there's nothing they can give him. There's He's... He kind of is who he is at this point, right? In fact, yeah. we have a follow-up to the Clooney story yesterday. Speaking of Wall Street Journal, a very good news story on their reporting regarding the event, the Clooney event that he put together in Hollywood and why it may well be that Clooney felt as unsettled as he apparently felt, leading to a an op-ed piece in the New York Times that according to several published reports today, the Biden administration tried to intercede. I assume not with the Times, because that would be a little dangerous, but perhaps with other Democratic operatives to try to convince Clooney to not run it or to not write it, whatever the case may be. But I thought that was interesting as well. So maybe we'll we'll run some of it. We'll see. Then it's the issue of how far we go with it, although we right. have our, our clock does allow us to stay with it if it gets um, interesting. Um, all this really uh, dovetails with what I opened with, the fossilization of America leader. Because maybe today's a good day for us to broaden the discussion beyond just the president of the United States. Speaking again of the Wall Street Journal. They just did a piece just within the last few days, and maybe, again, the inspiration is all of the debate, the speculation surrounding Biden's fitness at this point, whether he has reached an age and a condition that makes it borderline frightening to think of him trying to stay in charge for not just the rest of this term, but four more years uh, after being elected again. Um, leadership and aging, they write, were urgent issues for American companies even before President Biden's halting debate performance. Here's a couple of stats for background. High-powered professionals increasingly, I found this interesting, work past traditional retirement ages, even as ageism which is a real thing, 
pushes others to leave careers early. There will be twice as many workers, twice as many workers, 75 years and older in 2020 as there were in 2000. I should say there will be twice as many workers, 75 and older in 2030 as there were in 2020. The Bureau of Labor Statistics projects. More than half of private businesses in the U.S. are owned by people over 55, according to a research or to research by something called Project Equity. And the list kind of goes on and on. And part of this, I mean, I I think we've talked about this in other contexts. Um, People are living longer, you could argue to a certain extent, because smoking is not as dominant in the culture as it used to be. It's not gone, but not as dominant. Presumably, we've done a better job in many cases of fighting off, at least fending off many forms of cancer, right? And so in general, life expectancy, I think, has been going up. Now, I haven't checked. The COVID thing kind of might have screwed some of that up. But in general, that's the case. So I'm looking, I'm hoping today for texts from listeners about this particular issue as they see it affect things in their workplace. Because it, it it should really, the discussion should go beyond just the presidency, as important as that is, right? Especially when we know what these stats indicate, that a lot more workers are hanging around longer. And what, I mean, there's some anecdotes, which we'll get to in this piece next segment, that seem to indicate, yeah, there's uncomfortable moments for lots of companies beyond, the, you know, Washington, where... People have to sort of step in and say, you shouldn't be in this job anymore, or this is affecting the company, or we're going to have to take, we're going to have to have some form of intervention if possible. Sometimes easier said than done. Uh, Grant in your hand time first. Is that The fan, yes. The fan and bigdeck.com want to help you with that. It's our national cash contest. First keyword of the afternoon is grand. Go to kfan.com and enter the keyword grand. Maybe it's a function of my advanced age. Couple textures reminding me. Well, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. You say you're going to move the inbox to five thirty during the same segment in which you say, "Well, the president's speaking at five thirty. Yeah. Box. Fair point. Um, but as someone who works with older people, <laughs> you got to learn to just let stuff some, go. Some stuff's not just kind of let them some, get back to where they need to. Some yeah. battles are not worth fighting, is what you're just saying. keep the train somewhat on the tracks, and yeah. everything should be fine. In in um. Defense of me, I think I'm just as capable of conducting that first segment the same way when I was 35, 45, 55, whatever. I don't really think that's it. I, I, there are some things that apply, but I'm not sure that's um, indeed one of them. So we'll figure it out. Just text guardsy. Somewhere in there we'll get the inbox in, and, and maybe we'll do some of the um, the presser as well. Uh, Gina from Bemidji writes, who can afford to retire? Well, that is that is an issue for some people, correct? That sure. is part of... Uh, well, you know, again, if this can get really philosophical and, and deep. I've had this debate, I think, before with people. That this notion that, <laughs> what do you want to keep working for? What's the point? If you have the means to retire, you're in a position where you're fortunate enough to be able to do that. Why don't you do it? Why do you why do you feel obligated to keep working? Spend the time to see the world or whatever the case may be. And for many people, that can be quite liberating. But I've always sort of chafed at, resisted the notion that you get to tell other people what they want to do in that regard. Because we also have occasions, we've had, I don't know how many times this has come up anecdotally, of people, once they hit that retirement point, they started declining across the board, physically, mentally, spiritually, etc. If it's a part of what, it may not define everybody. But it may define, be part of how some people define themselves. And who are we to judge? Who are we to say you got to get out? Now, 
fitness issues come in, obviously, at some point. And that's part of what we're going to get to regarding some of these anecdotes in the, in the story I'm quoting from, from the Wall Street Journal. But I don't like people looking down on other people for wanting to continue to work past retirement age. You know what I'm saying? I do. I, I, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not my business. Well, my response when people, when I have those same conversations is, if you like what you're doing, people like you, you're making good money. They continue to pay it. <laughs> Why would you stop? Or who would stop? Yes. Yeah, that's kind of how I phrase it. I go, who would stop? If, you, if it's part of your identity, I don't think you have to apologize for it. Now, for somebody else, they might say, well, that's too important. You're making that part of your life too important. Okay. You can, you can, if you want to get into that judgmental business in that regard, do it. But I, I'm not interested in doing it. Um, With the percentage of the companies you said owned by people 55 or older, I have to imagine in a lot of those cases, those companies were started by the individual that currently owns them, or it might be right. a family deal. And especially if you opened up a company or started a company, I imagine that's a hard thing to let go of. If it's literally your baby, if you started it 10, 15, 20 years Can't ago. Can't be easy. Can't be easy. And, you know, we work with a lot of people that have passed their company down through the generations or they have multiple generations that work for them. But a lot of times the person that started it or the middle generation is still there working because Correct. it's their company. It's part of it is. It literally is part of their, it's their baby. family dynamic. Yeah. And so I don't it makes sense to me that that would be difficult to walk away from if you if you didn't want to. Love the Grum Gal. Isn't that kind of because we can't afford retirement anymore after a certain age? Another, you know, kind of confirmation of the uh, earlier text we got in that regard. Uh, here's one from 763 Guy. I think that article was made for you. Wow. And then he hashtagged it up high. <laughs> he gave himself his own Harlan. Down. I like it. Hard. You said... Writes Hendo in Minneapolis, the inbox is at 530. The president cannot supersede that. So he's saying don't preempt it. Wow. He's saying we tape the, the president? inbox is that sacred. I mean, we could do it where we monitor. And then, like you say, you play back if there's a bad faux pas, if there's something, there's an uncomfortable moment. Well, I'll tell you this. I won't even need to monitor it because... Any That's of true. those moments that you're talking about yeah, will be right. on our Twitter page within, I'll run on it, I'll roll on it, but anything that is worth mentioning, which I'm sure there will be, it, that's going to be the most tweeted about thing all day today. So we're going to have plenty of opportunity to catch up if we do want to keep the inbox at 530. Himanshu Palsuli is the chief executive of the professional development firm Cornerstone. He used to fly overnight to Bengaluru, India. Check into his hotel for a morning shower, then report to his company's satellite office for a full day of work with virtually no sleep. Now, he acknowledges such a grueling itinerary would wipe him out. He's 60. He says he's unwilling to invite the chatter that would ensue if he indeed dozed off in a meeting or made a verbal gaffe. So, he doesn't fight it. He starts international trips a day early to get proper rest, and he naps as needed to combat jet lag. He says the strategy helps him perform better and ensures there's no reason to wonder whether he's up to the job. If someone fumbles or stumbles when trying to recall a fact, immediately there are questions about cognitive issues, he says, of the scrutiny around executives. As the story lays out, some interesting examples here. Late Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor. They suggest in this story, appear to pull it off better than most when it comes to the challenges for knowing when to step back if you're an ambitious individual who has tended to spend your life full speed ahead. She revealed in 2018 she had dementia, seemed sound as ever, when she announced her retirement in 2005 at age 75. The drama that surrounded oil and construction magnate Pat Bolin, better known as the longtime owner of the NFL's Denver Broncos, highlights the pitfalls of holding on. 
Bolin had Alzheimer's disease for several years before he relinquished day-to-day decision-making and placed the team in a trust in 2014. A legal dispute that centered on Bolin's wherewithal when he appointed non-family members as trustees led to the Broncos' sale in 2022, three years after his death. Stakes are high when a leader starts to slip which is why it's critical to have people within a company who can intervene before it's too late. Those are the words of Hubert Jolie, a former Best Buy CEO, who sits on the boards of Johnson and Johnson and Ralph Lauren. That's a good gig if you can get it. On the boards. He recalls one instance where he felt compelled to ask what was going on with a fellow board member who wasn't his usual self. Jolie's gentle probing led his colleague to disclose a serious health condition that affected his performance, but with treatment, the person returned to normal. Now, that's a best-case scenario. I'm sure it doesn't always work that neatly and that cleanly as, uh, as well. Joey says, ideally, executives call time on themselves. He says that's what happened when Ralph Loren transitioned from CEO to exec chairman and chief creative officer of his apparel company in 2015 at 75 years old. Directors never had to have an awkward exit conversation with Loren who remains active in the business to this day, according to Jolie, but they would have been obligated if the founder had faltered and refused to recognize it as well. Um, Artificial intelligence tools in development at academic laboratories from Boston to San Francisco aim to detect and even predict mental slippage years in advance. That scares me. I don't know. We trust that. Well, because then it be, we does got, it become self fulfilling? Do you just start anticipating it? We got the analytics. You're slipping. <laughs> the, the, the numbers. You've got like six to eight good months left. The stats don't lie, and then it's over. Yeah, I mean, just acknowledge it, and and let's see if we can we can get, we can start the transition and put you in a corner somewhere where you'll still have an office, but you're not going to have quite perhaps as much responsibility. Small private or family-run businesses. This can get very ticklish. Why? Less oversight. And often, naturally, more emotion than in public companies. You could see where that would make sense, right? Family-run businesses. Yeah. That's got to get really dicey. Definitely. Dad, it's time, man. You got to let go of this thing. So I don't think there are any easy answers on this, but I think it's worth discussing because... Like I said, we're, we're, we're being fossilized. We're getting older and older, whether we like it or not, for various reasons when it comes to people um, in the workplace. Let me get to a couple of their texts that have come in. There's a bunch via the Bradshaw and Bryant KFAN text line. Um, my father worked his butt off to raise a family of 11 children. Is this Kessler? <laughs> Texting in? When he became of age and retired, only to find out that my mother was diagnosed with cancer and less than six months later, I learned from his experience and retired when I was 56. Five years later, my wife was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. She died three years ago, but we had five great years together. I get it. This is where it gets ticklish about what you do and whether you regret not retiring sooner if you had that opportunity. But I'm still here to not judge, as judgmental as I am on a lot of stuff. There are some things that I'm pretty imposed to making judgments on. Because I don't know the dynamics within any family. I don't even know the dynamics within any relationships. I go, I, maybe part of the reason the relationship works to the degree it does is they have their separateness as well. Yeah. Because there's all kinds of stories that are written about the, the adjustments made. Well, you're home all the time now? Mm-hmm. Seriously? All the time. You're going to be in this house. I'm not going to be free of you at all? My favorite line I ever heard on that was, the vows said, for better or worse, but not for lunch. <laughs> it's a brilliant line. It is. It says it, it captures it perfectly. Local angle on retirement, re, uh, CEO of the, of the Target Corporation, where I worked for eight years, longtime CEO Bob Ulrich retired in 2008 when he reached the company's mandatory Retirement age of 65, however, Target made headlines in 2023 when it announced that the 63-year-old current CEO, Brian Cornell, 
agreed to stay on the job for another three years, and the company's mandatory retirement age of 65 was being, well, retired. Funny. I missed that one. I, I do remember he's, he hung on a little bit. Check for slippage. That's it. Nothing else there. Just check for slippage. Um, boomers not retiring means Gen X and millennials are not moving up in some companies. Boomers have enough to retire on. They have enough. They just want to hold on to power and don't care about what they are doing to the rest of us. Typical. Some resentment there. And I, there's probably some truth to it. But can the boomers say, take me on, whippersnappers? <laughs> you know. What did John Roethlisberger say? Work take later. my position? Work later. Yeah. Work longer. Don't be afraid of work. Don't, don't demand load management when you're 25 years old. That's another thing. There are a lot of kids who, and again, I'm not here to begrudge them. The story, the, the, I think the surveys seem to indicate that younger kids, they, when it comes to the quote-unquote work-life balance, they want more life and less work. I'm not here to tell them they're wrong, but I'm here to tell them if that's the, the, the balance they choose, then it's probably going to be harder for them to nudge out the boomers who philosophically might come after different. Different. You can't have it both ways, can you? You can't be, no, 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 I want to be more about life, but I also want the plum jobs. Well, that might be a little bit more complicated. Doesn't always work like that. Depending on the situation. My doctor says some people wear out faster than others. It's another important point. I don't think this should be about Joe Biden's age or Donald J. Trump's age. I don't necessarily. To me, it, it's about what, what you see in those individuals, how they are aging, where they seem to be slipping. And it is historically been too easy to get out of here, old timer, just on the basis of, of age when the slippage that's shown may not in this, in many cases, have anything to do with age. It may, it may have, there may be other factors that are involved in it. Uh, we didn't, you know, we had Bill Maher on a couple of days ago. He's ranted on this before. And I think with some wisdom that we might be the only culture or one of the few cultures in which getting older is almost viewed as getting less worthy of respect. That in many cultures, the, the wise elders are the ones who've lived the longest and experienced different things, and they are held in a certain with a certain level of esteem. Reverence. We tend to want to just mock them, ridicule them, and say, get out of town, get out of here. You're in the way. Why is that? Have we always been about youth in this culture? Is it all about, I guess it is to a certain extent. A little bit, and ambition, and, you know, the capitalistic nature of I got to go get mine. I would think there's some to that. There's probably some to that, too. Um, Dan, if your job is your identity, you need to find hobbies and friends. According to who? If I get, and I do, get sustenance out of the job I do, who is someone else to say better to get sustenance out of a hobby? For them, maybe. But I, I, I'm just, to me, there's an arrogance in that. I'm not telling you that you're wrong if you want to make it more about hobbies and, and friends or whatever, all the other things that are in the pie chart, you know, that's available to people in terms of their existence. And all of us, I think, to varying degrees are going to have regrets about decisions we make and, and have already. But I, I'm not going to tell somebody if they get, because there are people who view, God, if, if your job is part of your identity, there's something wrong with you. Well, maybe the person saying that doesn't enjoy their job as much. Right. Maybe, and, and again, I'm not here to say they're wrong, but I'm here to say same rules don't apply to, to everybody. Um, wow, here's an inbox shot. Inbox is a tired segment. Happy to miss it today. Wow. All this negativity that's in this town sucks. Well, we read them all. You know, we're not going to be too defensive about even idiots like that. 
I believe more in the audience than that particular texter does. I do too, actually. Because the audience makes the bit. And, yeah, I think most uh, uh, members of the audience enjoy it or seem to. I find joy in my work and am fortunate enough to have a job that I likely will be able to perform until I'm Biden's age. No plans to retire as long as I'm healthy both physically and mentally. Okay. I I think that's that's God bless you. Um mandatory retirement age for general and flag officers is age sixty four. Officers in 09, three star and 010, four star positions, they may have retirement deferred until age sixty six by the Secretary of Defense or until age sixty eight by the president. I'll take uh, I, I'll, I'll I'll accept his word on that. No turning back. Sixty to seventy are good years, and I owe them to myself, not my employer. That's Bill from Edina. Um, many studies, writes Paul, have shown too many folks don't have enough saved to be able to retire to traditional retirement age. And yeah, we've this is a variation of a theme we've already had that some people can't afford. They do want to retire, but they can't afford to, right, for various reasons. Um, Dan, I'm almost 62. That I think this may be the same bill for me, Dinah. I'm almost 62, and I retired three years ago. Happy for you. I, I Again, I, I'm not. Live I, your life. Live your life, man. Live your best life. Smoke but, them if you got them. But don't tell somebody that, well, you should just be playing golf and enjoying your family which would seem to indicate that you're you're not enjoying your family um if you're still working it's too simple of course the concern about mortality and disease right i mean that's always going to be there but is that a reason necessarily to say i'm going to run away from from the job i have um i i don't i just don't think you could live that way i wouldn't Dan, I work for, this is Jeff from Richfield, an electrical distribution company. The industry has a giant age gap. There's a large amount of employees that are 60 plus and a bunch that are under 30. I've sat in yearly meetings put on by our HR team that discuss retirement, 401ks, etc. The older generation as a whole seems to be woefully unprepared for retirement. I regularly hear questions about retirement accounts that are questions they should have been asking 30 years ago. I'm not sure who is at fault, but I think a major issue is overall retirement education, understanding compound interest, taxes on retirement funds, and so on. That's a intimidating language that some people, a lot of people, have difficulty speaking. Well, it's Don't complicated, it? yes. It is, and it can be very, very complicated. Uh, union elites may be, might be uh, voting blue, but the majority of rank-and-file workers are voting red. Not sure that's true, but uh, interesting comment. Um, there's a Biden cheap shot. Well, yes, the presidency does not have a board of directors along with a board chairman, chairwoman. They are a, uh, they are the gatekeepers. Yeah, who are the gatekeepers here? Well, what's tricky is, and this should be tricky, is he was elected, right? He has been nominated again and won overwhelmingly. Now, we talked about this with Kessler yesterday, and Kessler was saying, well, it wasn't exactly an open, you know, nomination, nominating process, which is true, but it's 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 also because he was the incumbent, and so the way it played out isn't all that unusual, and it's part of, I did ask the question yesterday, because I tend to think for the Democrats to have their best chance, he probably is going to have to go, and the signs are worrisome, but there is a part of me that's troubled by, well, he's got a lot of votes, though. And so should that, should all these exterior forces, should they be trying to change, to a certain extent, those votes, in effect, or to nullify those votes? I'm not saying it isn't worthy of discussion. I'm just saying I think we have to do that with respect and concern if we believe in the democratic process. Right. That's all I'm saying. Because people asked him to be there. Yeah, exactly it. So is, uh, are these segments, I feel like this segment is either building up to a big mic drop of you're either retiring at the end of the week or you've just signed another 12-year contract. So which one is it? It's neither. Neither? Neither, okay. yeah. It's just, no, we're just, it would, just, I think it would have been better planning day. to have some type of seismic announcement well, one I'd, way or the other. I'll, if, if Bosberg, you know, I'll, I'll be glad to talk extension if you what you, what you want. But, I mean, the extension like I have is pretty long now. 
Sorry. I, Garzy, I'm sorry. I know you're trying to nudge me out. I'm not. I mean, but, some of the texters might be. Well, I'm not. I yeah. don't speak for them. You don't? I just felt like it would have been good planning to maybe hold this for, you know, 10 years from now. <laughs> or not. But now we can maybe revisit it. Oh, we could, we could we could revisit it like a decade. It's not from like now. we've ever had a difficulty uh, repeating segments or repeating ideas. I think my favorite um, retirement. Well, there's been a million great retirements. Obviously, the Shelby one is good. He retired seven yes. times. Rosen retired, but yet is still working here, but yet never works. So I'm not sure how that one works. Yeah, he's got he's got a hell of a gig, doesn't he? And then there's Royce, who said in like 2012 <laughs> that his last word would be written at the 2016 uh... Ryder Cup. And he might be writing when it comes back in 2029. When he was in here, I said, because he said, he said, he's hit at something. I yeah. go, you're going to write at the right. I never said which Ryder Cup. That was 13 years ago if he makes it to that one. He's just, I've told, what I've said is you're not going to retire. And that's okay. But again, why would he? Well, that's it. If he likes doing it, exactly. the paper likes that's him, my point. why it's would like, he? Don't, don't, I don't I, blame him. I think part of what spurs that conversation on is almost this. We, we we introduce and nurture this guilt in people that, well, what are you doing? What are you doing hanging on? What's the problem? You shouldn't have to apologize for it. Now, if if you've lost it, obviously that's where it gets trickier. And that gets back to where we are regarding the president of the United States as well. Man. Former uh, T-Paw Bobo, Brian McClung, is going to join us at 430. He probably doesn't have that on his business card. Does he? I mean, that's not a... Bobo? Bobo? No. It's one of my favorite terms. He might not love it, but he's going to join us at 4.30 today. Joe Biden presser, 5.30. It's 5.30 uh, this evening. It's a NATO presser, correct? I, I mean, think that's, that's what the they bit, have. Yep. But obviously, um, there's going to be a lot of interest. Um, as we said earlier, and I think this, this text kind of captures the uh, essence of the issue. A president that people need to watch to see if he can handle a press conference should not be president. That's the problem with any of these new, these thresholds where it was, okay, post-debate, let's see what he does with Stephanopoulos, and then we're, let's see what he does with this event. What he, it, 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 it's, it's fraught when the whole deal, a presidency is reduced to the next time he shows up publicly. I think it's kind of he is who he is at this point, and you either accept it, or you don't. Now, I understand when it's visual, when it's live, it's harder to, to look away from it. And it's, to a certain extent, harder to finesse it. But, um, by the way, were the, um, do we know who the questioners are going to be? And did, uh, did, did the president or his staffs indicate to those reporters what their questions should be? I'm sure there were some emails sent. Yeah, probably. I don't know who covers the NATO summits or the NATO meetings. Well, I assume everybody. I yeah, assume everybody, all the big national news it's, organizations it's, it's here. Yeah, yeah. I think in this case that that would be very, very, uh, very likely. Um, uh, a texture is also asking whether this will be owed to a dead gal day. Yes, there will be owed to a dead gal. Perhaps in the four o'clock hour. Of the broadcast, we do intend inbox, and maybe we go to some of the uh, of the president's press conference as uh, as well. All those things will be on the uh, on the table. Um, I mentioned more stuff is coming out that apparently precipitated the Clooney shift that reared its head in a significant way. An op-ed piece that he wrote or had written for him under his by not, byline uh, in the New York Times that got a lot of attention. Uh, Wall Street Journal did a deep dive, tried to do some reporting on, okay, what exactly took place at this fundraiser that seemed to alarm Clooney and a number of others? Here's the headline. The night President Biden lost George Clooney's support uh, it was the beginning of the end the fundraiser that was meant to turbocharge his re-election bid ultimately was the beginning of the end for one of his staunchest supporters. Took place downtown Los Angeles less than a month ago. And on that occasion, Clooney declared President Biden was the real star. 
Now, yesterday, as Eric Schwartzel puts it, he's calling for a change of cast, and they lay out the particulars from the op-ed piece. Um, he Clooney, as I said, was one of the hosts, along with other Hollywood stars. Barack Obama was on stage for a conversation with comedian Jimmy Kimmel and Biden. Biden, I should say. All the beautiful people were there. Clooney's co-host, your gal, Julia Roberts. Barbara Streisand jeered t- Donald Trump. And Jack Black took to the stage in a pair of overalls adorned with the stars and stripes. Wow, they really had a who's who there. Big names. Pretty big. President received a standing ovation when he took the stage, but for some audience members, the mood changed when he actually started taking questions. And I don't know if these were scripted questions or not. Did not apparently go well. Some in the audience said Biden appeared at times to struggle through answers or keep up with the conversationalists. A Biden campaign spokesman said journalists in 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 attendance didn't characterize the president's performance that way in the reporting at the time. I don't even remember the reporting at all on this particular occasion because there's a million, well, not a million of these, but I mean, you know, how newsworthy are they? They serve a purpose for the candidate, but uh, I don't know how much attention most people pay to it. Um, but there were apparently, according to this piece, several occasions where the, the, the uncomfortable moments for those observers, apparently, including, as I mentioned, uh, uh, George Clooney. In video taken at the event, Biden is halting in his delivery of some responses. I'm looking at a photo. Yeah, and it's Biden in the middle. Obama is to his left. And it looks like your guy, Kimmel, is to the president's right. Some in the room who had just returned from the group of summit Seven Summit in New York seemed, I should say Biden had just returned from the group of Seven Summit in New York, or in Europe, seemed to have a hard time keeping up with Kimmel's quick patter. Well, who doesn't? I mean, the agile mind of stay with Kimmel? Him. It's impossible. Obama seemed to pick up loose threads in Biden's responses and filled in gaps. One attendee who sat near the stage said it was clear to him by the end of the evening that the president was not as sharp as he once was. Now, Kimberly Emerson is apparently the Southern California co-chair of the Biden Victory Fund. She says, President was alert and friendly to me. It's not that unreasonable to go back and parse the President's performance after the fact when he seemed to be fine to the rest of us regarding he's re- she's responding to the Clooney essay. Got to stop this nitpicking, this destruction of our own candidate. I mean, the best comeback to that, again, Clooney's not the last word. Any of the Democrats who said, going all the way back to Dean Phillips, none of them are the last word, right? But logically speaking, does it make any sense that a a Clooney, for example, and others would go as public as they have if it was just nitpicking that was going on or that they were convinced it was just nitpicking? You know what I'm saying? That's that's the part that's counterintuitive because... He's, like I said yesterday, as he said in the in the start, start of the piece, he's an unapologetic, lifelong Democrat. This guy's as blue as it gets, right? It can't be. It's got to be the last thing that he wants. It's the last river he wants to cross on, what was the date yesterday? July 10th on an election year, right? So that's the part that, to me, just does not make a lot of sense, that there's too many people going down this road that don't want to, can't possibly want to, other than a belief that um, I want to have the best chance to not lose uh, to Donald J. Trump. Uh, keep the text coming via the Bradshaw and Brian KFN text line 64686. In the 4 o'clock hour, I mentioned Brian McClung at 430. And also, um, Ode to a Dead Gal will be part of um, the 4 o'clock hour of the broadcast. Did you hear about the Delta Airlines online kerfuffle? I have heard about it. We're probably going to get to that before this show is done because it, I think, raises a lot of interesting questions. 
By the way, did we ever get to the bottom of what happened at the airport yesterday that shut it down? Was I it, think it was just that unattended bag. It was bag unattended bag, which obviously... That one of the dogs reacted the so wrong way if a, to. If a dog reacts the wrong way where it turns out they ain't nothing insidious in the bag, what happens to the dog? Do, do they get fired? You bring in a cat. Dismissed? Someone that knows what they're doing. I mean, you got... <laughs> wow. It's not going to false alarm the whole airport and leave traffic both directions on Highway 5. You used to like dogs. That's a good point. I did. 